Why is the market crashing so hard? Why is the Federal Reserve such a joke? How am I making money in this incredible down market? Hang on. This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Hey everybody. The answer to the first question as to why this crash is happening uh, so intensely is because everything is crashing. You know, crypto is, uh, is crashing generally. Bitcoin is struggling to stay above 20,000. Uh, you know, this, this is, I remember it being predicted it was going to, you know, I, I never know how to value crypto because there's no objective criteria. And you have to kind of believe what they're telling you. And so I, I have no way of knowing whether it's worth a million or nothing. You know, it's just, I, I will say this, Bitcoin is worth every bit of the paper it's not written on. <laughs> that, 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 that's an original for me. But, uh, you know, this is not to disparage it. Uh, it's just too early for it, I think. It's, it's not really taken hold. And it needs to take hold in, in daily life uh, to be a necessity before it's going to be able to ride out a crash decently. Uh, oil. I think that was the kind of final straw for me. You know, I was holding on to some oil stocks. And then they started to go down and the price of oil has gone from like 124 per barrel uh, down to, I think it's around 116 now or so. And, uh, you know, it's it, oil is affected by so many factors. You can actually have the price of oil go up and then have your oil companies go down because of some rumor that Saudi Arabia is producing more or less oil. Uh, you know, it's just any rumor can can throw that market one way or the other. And it's just not appealing to me. And I think the main factor that fed into oil coming down and that's going to drive the price lower eventually, and it'll, it'll be an eventually, is because the demand for oil is going to go down. As we hit a recession, I think we're already in a recession. It just hasn't been officially been recognized yet. But I think w uh, once uh, the recession takes hold in force, uh, it's affecting everything. I mean, it's it's even going to affect banks that supposedly do better with higher interest rates, but they need to lend money to people. And people are going to be very cautious about lending money at these interest rates. It's already affecting housing. Uh, the real estate market is getting ready. To, to, I don't know if it's going to crash. It's It's going to come down in value. That's for sure. I mean, it has to come down in value uh, just to offset interest rates rates. Uh, and if you, you get a lack of demand, uh, plus higher interest rates, you know, that that's going to make it come down eventually. Uh, or that, that eventually, I, I don't think it's going to be as severe as the stock market, just because the last thing people are going to give up are their houses. I mean, where else are you going to, are you going to buy a new house in this? Uh, where are you going to go if you sell your house, you know? I, I just I just think the statistics favor real estate not coming down as harshly as the stock market. So the reason the stock market is, market is crashing is that everything is crashing. And the Federal Reserve, uh, they are adding to this delusion. And, and I don't think it's not so much a... a it's not so much, it's not that they're trying to lie. They're trying to present things in the best possible light, which I suppose is part of his job to some extent. He's trying to calm people down. But I mean, imagine he got himself in a position that if he hadn't raised it 0.75, uh, uh, three quarters of a percentage point uh, recently, like he just did, if he had not done that, and raised it only 0.5, the market would have gone down immediately, simply because 
he does he is not taking this seriously enough. He, they're not doing anything. If he would have raised it one percent, that would have been too much. Okay, 0.75 was just right, and they leaked the news to the Wall Street Journal the day before to try to lower the shock to the market. But the 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 information on inflation has gotten so bad, they had to shock the market a little bit. But the market liked being shocked because, uh, holy macro, he's finally doing what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know, it, it's just a joke. Uh, and, and he's up there and he's saying all these awful things. Okay, things are so terrible that they latch onto any positive any statement that can po possibly be interpretive in a different light. He said something like, well, these 0.75 increases won't be all that common. I, that's not the exact, but something like that. Okay. And they latched onto that. Oh, that's positive. But, but then he said in the same in, interview, he said, but we are considering 0.5 or 0.75 for the next meeting. I, I bet the real news is they're considering 1.0, a full percentage point, if the data gets more out of hand than it already is. And him keeping talking about 2% inflation, man, they're not going to see 2% inflation anytime soon. Simply, you got to go above the inflation rate to bring it down. Uh, the inflation rate right now, officially, we know it's higher than this, but officially it's 8.6%, okay? And their plan is to raise it up to around 3.8% in a year. It'll be higher than that. They'll be forced to do higher than that. But that's part of, we're not gonna, go, going to make it crash too much, you know? But anyway, they're going to increase uh, interest rates, we'll say 4%. OK, that's half of what the inflation rate right is right now. That's if it doesn't get worse. OK, I will interpret this for you. They're not going to bring down inflation to 2 percent. They hope to bring it down to 4 or 5 percent. In other words, uh, they, they want to raise the rate somewhat so it slows inf inflation, but they can't hardly bring it down. And the reason they can't bring it down is they can't raise inflation rates. I'm sorry. They can't raise interest rates too high because of the effect it has on the national debt. Uh, we have something like 30 trillion in the cumulative uh, national debt. You know, you raise that to 8%. Wow, you, you'll get over two trillion per year just in interest increases on the cumulative natural, uh, national debt, and they can't really afford to make it go up by more than one trillion, and that's about four percent. Okay, and so th their goal is to raise it four percent, but they're going to have to raise it five percent just because uh, the, I'll break it to you now. They'll raise it to 5% and that will bring down inflation half percent. So inflation won't be as horrible. It'll still just be bad. Uh, and interest rates will be bad, but they won't be horrible. So uh, they hope to avoid the horrible by going with the bad. <laughs> and that is the truth. And unemployment's going to go up. It's going to go up to about four or five, at least 4%. They're saying that. I'm saying five or 6%. It's probably more like it because you have to have that kind of effect on the economy to bring demand down. The metrics on this stock market are just awful. The S&P 500 is officially in a bear market. It's down about 25% somewhere around there, <laughs> you know, and it's probably going to keep going. And I think I, the simple way of, of knowing, uh, you know, Tesla, if that stays below 700, it's in the 600s now. Man, I think it could go to, to the 500, uh, 500s. Uh, that's my worry. Uh, Apple's in uh, like in the 130s. Uh, it could go d below 110. You know, you have great stocks like these. Uh, Amazon and, and Google haven't really been able to do anything. No stock is doing good. Do you know 
only one stock is being bought for every 20 that are being sold approximately okay and and most of the buying and selling it's simply shorts you know <laughs> When I buy, when I when I'm bear trading, when I buy a when I short a stock, that is selling the stock. <laughs> okay, you you sell the stock, and it's a promise. I will gladly pay you later if you pay me for if you sell. Let me sell your stock down, take the price down, and I'll replace it later on. And what you hope will happen is that the price drops, and you. It costs less for you to replace that stock. That's basically what sh shorting is. And so it works just the opposite of the way. Uh, and all the big buying and selling is, is bear trading. Uh, the brokerages know this. The big corporations uh, know this. Uh, people that trade all the time know this. Uh, you're just uh, you're looking at what the other uh, bear market traders are doing okay and there there is no trade in this market it, it has one direction and it's down you have these bear market rallies which oh they are so cruel you know they just pump you up and you think you're going to make money and then it just pounds you down harder and so the the pattern has been that it rips up it rises in price it rips up and and then it, it plateaus and and that's when you get out uh, you know you have to you have to play it that way and you have to be a day trader in my mind okay uh, some swing trading might be possible but it's always a major risk you know long term investing in bear market rallies is whether you leave it on overnight and let me tell you about some of my wild trades my favorite stock right now is SQQQ, and it's a triple leveraged inverse fund on the QQQ, which is an index of the 100 largest companies on the NASDAQ. And so it has Amazon, it has Google, it has Facebook, it has Tesla, uh, all these great companies, uh, which have been overvalued and now are being punished for having had their prices shoot up so much. Uh, so it's a way of, of shorting the market and you don't have to do it yourself. Uh, they do it all for you, which <laughs> is a big attraction of this uh, to me. I, do, I really don't like shorting. The only time I'll short is during a crash of this magnitude. Okay, so if I'm shorting, that means, man, I think uh, things are really going down big time. And this is the vehicle I use for this, and I only use it during big crashes, and, it's, and I only do it within index. And this is the 100 largest, which are the most likely ones uh, to have still have gone up too much. Uh, even though they're great companies, uh, and I will invest in, in them in the future. And I may invest in the QQQ in the future, but right now, uh, nothing is good according to the market. And you wanna listen to the market. I'm not gonna tell the market what, what to do. I listen to what the market has to tell me, and it's telling me it's a big time crash. So I started putting major money into this on uh, that Friday, that, that I believe was the 10th, and of course, it went up. I, I I left it in for the weekend. Boy, that's long term trading in a bear market. Let me tell you, you you roll the dice on that one, and I happened to roll it right, and so I made good money on Monday, uh, and I I was so happy about it that I kept buying more, which of course in the short run turned out to be a mistake because you got a a wild bear market rally on oh boy, uh, you know he's telling us all these terrible things, but it's not as terrible as we thought, and so the market shoots up like four <laughs> percent what i did during that day is i just kept buying <laughs> i doubled down and, and so then when it took off on thursday and you know what when i went to sleep wednesday night i said you know i don't want to wake up early i'm going to sleep through this because i'm gonna, i knew it was going to uh, that SQQQ was going to go up. In other words, the market was going to crash further. And I would be tempted to, to try to just break even 
because what had happened is over the weekend I made like ten thousand dollars, and that but then I lost five thousand dollars on Wednesday, but then I doubled down. And by the time it was all down, I doubled it, maybe tripled down. I don't know. I, I lost track at some point. I ended up owning 10,000 shares of SQQQ. Oh, my God, what am I doing? And it went up. And, man, it said 71,000. And I said, sold. And I sold SQQQ. So on Thursday, I made 71000 on SQQQ. And for the, uh, the eight days, the, the five trading days, I made about 75000 to the positive. <laughs> okay. There were the rough moments. I think I was down 40000 at one point. But I just kept buying just because I was so convinced how ridiculous this whole situation is. And this is where the importance of having conviction in your trade really matters. Uh, I was convinced that I was on to it enough that I was I I did not deserve to lose that much. And I thought it was it was gravy time uh, from my experience with previous crashes. So from June 9th to June 16th of 2022, I made about 75,000. Uh, not bad wages for a week's work, I guess. And now I'm not, I'm not planning to reinvest unless something crazy happens. And nowadays, something crazy happening is the norm for this market. In other words, I might date trade uh, tomorrow friday but i'm not leaving it on over the weekend not in this market uh but i probably i will be tempted to day trade friday but uh, friday is triple witching day where all the contracts uh, I don't know, uh, options and all this junk. Uh, in other words, there's lots of factors flying around on triple witching day that tends to make the price jump up and down, jump up and down wildly and unpredictably. And you can make a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money. <laughs> and unless something looks super obvious to me, I'm probably going to leave it alone and then uh, set my sights for next Tuesday. We have Monday off because it's June Juneteenth. Uh, which is a holiday uh, uh, in, in memoration of, of that tragedy. Uh, and so uh, we, I, I just, and I think I need a rest from this because to do this, you have to be on it every second. And, uh, and that's why I don't recommend generally that people do what I do. I'm used to this. I've been doing it for uh, 30, 40 years. You know, uh, I've gotten the hang of it. I seem to be good. I'm, I'm better at this bear market trading than I ever imagined I would be. Uh, so, uh, and I've gotten luck. I've, I've had luck with me. And so that's, that's a big factor with it too. Uh, so I, I can't recommend <laughs> investing on the basis of you're going to be lucky. You want to be more certain. But I am, I do feel confident that it's still a trend downwards. And I think we're about halfway through this. Does that sound unbelievable? Welcome to the, a bear market crash. If this is what a bear market is, it's like unbelievable. And it strikes you with transcendental awe. <laughs> and, and we all need the luck to get through this one. Uh, thank you for listening and watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I will plan to see you in the next one. And let's hope things uh, turn for the better eventually. But eventually, I, I want to use this money I'm making on the downside to invest on the upside and contribute to an up market. Uh, yeah, it's fun making money, but it's a lot more fun making money when it's going up. And frankly, you make more, more money when it's going up, too, because I'm willing to risk more. Yeah, I'm taking calculated risk, uh, but I'm not laying it all out there. Uh, and But in an up market, I'm willing to lay it all out there because the odds are, are just on your side. And in a bear market, they're not on your side. So be cautious, be careful. This is not financial advice. You do what you're going to do. Uh, and good luck to us all.